Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. We're also streaming to you live on yorbamedia.com, broadcasting to you from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios. All right, my first guest today, Mark Healy, President, Chief Executive Officer, American Stock Transfer and Trust Company. This man comes to the show with well over 30 years of experience in the financial sector, and he has one out of every four listed companies as his client. Mark, welcome to the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you, Michael. It's a pleasure to join you today and talk a little bit about AST and what we're doing. Uh, please uh, embellish who you are, what you've done a little bit for me, because you are more able to, to hit these high points and, and, and bring it out to the audience. You, you have such a rich history in this industry. I just want to give you a moment to do that for yourself. Sure. Sure. My, my, my pleasure. Well, first of all, AST, American Stock Transfer, we are we're, we're the largest independent transfer agent in the U.S. As you mentioned, we we service over 4,300 institutions and 7 million shareholders, which is unique enough in, in the financial services market. But also, in addition to that, we are we're also the largest private employer in Brooklyn, New York City, uh, employing over 900 employees uh, in the region. So, we'd love to talk about that a little bit today. But my background. Um, over 30 years in financial services, started out in Wall Street uh, back in the 80s, uh, primarily as CFO, COO of many large uh, investment firms, and uh, was recruited in 2002 to Fidelity. I ran their national financial uh, business, which was their broker-dealer operation, and uh, from there was recruited down to New York to come back to the great city of New York here and be the CEO of AST. And I've now been in this role for about five years. Wow! Yeah, you're doing a marvelous job. Tell our tell our audience. Uh, give us. Let's drill down a little bit. What uh, What does your company do? And then I wanted to move on, if we could, to some of the other topics that we had on, on the table today. Sure, sure. Um, you know, we're we're right down here in the heart of Brooklyn, mm -hmm. New York City. Uh, we're involved in. Uh, well, many, let me stop you for a second. What I, what I, what I meant to say was. The type of people that do business with you, because you mentioned a couple of them while we were on the phone the other day. That I was very impressed. Well, we we have world class clients. Uh, they they cover kind of uh, the gamut here, as you know. Um, our coverage is across both both the U.S. and Canada. So, all firms listed on the New York, Nasdaq, TMX. You could just imagine the the diversity of the clientele. Uh, firms like Microsoft, Honeywell. Wendy's and the like are um, across the, the platform here at, uh, at uh, AST. And that even as of late, you know, some of the names that might be on the forefront for investors that, that we've seen come out in the public markets, Grubhub, Coupons.com, Burlington Stores and the like, these are all uh, very uh, diverse and integrated clients for AST. So to kind of give you a background of the company and the services that we provide to these corporations, we, we not only perform the, the kind of transition from private life to public life for a client, but certainly we um, take the company through their maturity in the public markets and provide services that uh, range from, you know, their, their initial employee stock option plan for their management team through uh, working with the, the retail shareholders and recording their shares and, and managing that process uh, for, for shareholders. So, whether it's a need for uh, the issuer across the board as a, as a public entity or a retail investor from their needs uh, having an affinity for the company or investing uh, more, more deeply with the company, we have a unique position where we're really servicing both of those audiences. So it puts the company, AST, in a position to really be impactful for both the company and the investor. Well, you also have several complementary services, uh, equity plan services, wealth management solutions. Let's drill down into a little bit of that. Sure. Uh, you know, we feel here at AST, it's, uh, since we have such a deep, you know, uh, integrated relationship with the, uh, with the company that we, we're best positioned to really cover the company throughout the different product life cycles they may have. And certainly the first one you see in a public company is uh, an employee stock plan, fairly almost 100%. The statistics are 97%, but they're very high that a public company usually has a rank-and-file employee plan. And we're, we're able to offer that service right out of the gate to work with the employees of the company becoming public, 
really monitor all their, their, their options for them and put together a plan for those employees where it, it may be the first or, or maybe almost uh, in some instances a one-time situation where they're entering a position of, of, of wealth and uh, they'll need advice, they'll, they'll need certain services, and, and we're able to really handhold them through that process and give them access uh, to those products. Uh, further down the line, uh, you know, we have the ability to offer as well uh, you know, wealth management solutions, not only for those employees as they look to uh, you know, diversify positions or manage the position that they've gotten through the plan, but also to invest across all types of securities. So uh, our offering of AST Personal Wealth Solutions is something we've added to the mix here at the company that allows for really four things. Uh, uh, an employee to invest in a employee stock plan, uh, a retail individual to invest in a dividend reinvestment plan. Just by way of example, we have over a million shareholders that take advantage of that today already. Uh, and then we have our investment services through our, our brokerage arm, and then ultimately well, we have wealth management services available for folks at every level uh, of investment. So we feel from a shareholder perspective, those 7 million shareholders that sit on our platform really get coverage from, from the firm in terms of all their needs as a, you know, as a retail investor. What is the fastest growing part of your business that you see just really getting some legs and moving forward? Because you're already pretty much an ownership of, you know, the stock transfer business in your industry sector. You've got new things that you're launching. What, what is the fastest growing sector you see from your company you see going forward right now? Right. I think, I think that's a, uh, a very easy answer there. I think issuers are focused and, and really kind of in a position where their needs have grown on the ownership intelligence side of their shareholder base. You know, there's so many rules that have changed in the markets, so many different uh, voting uh, uh, regulations that have kind of changed that it really puts pressure on, on management and on boards to really know who their shareholders are. And, you know, we took that very seriously in terms of helping our, our, our companies. And so we launched just about a year and a half ago a, a, another brand called AST1. Uh, the one symbolizes kind of the integrated service for the issuer community which includes uh, ownership intelligence. And, and what that really means is uh, that uh, you know, we're able to go out and identify who the ownership um, uh, changes, who the ownership positions are being held by in the market, really helping management and, and the board communicate with, with those shareholders and, and really get more of a, a positive uh, referendum when there are proposals that go out uh, from the company or at the annual meeting and allow, allow management to have a greater success there. So that, is, that has been by far, as, as everyone knows, with the kind of advent of, of a lot of activism and pressure on balance sheets uh, within, within, the com within the country, that this has really been a growing demand for, for issuers. And, and that's been uh, what we've seen on our side as well. If that doesn't occur, if that's something that becomes even a greater issue, again, whether you are an equity-based traded company or you're a closed-end fund or even an open-end mutual fund to that degree, we can put together a program to solicit the, the amount of votes that you need to get those approvals done. And, and those two areas, ownership identification and solicitation to get the proxy uh, proposals passed at, at, a, at a favorable level, we've seen that by far as the, as the biggest growing part of the business and very much an appreciated product and service of the issues we have on the platform. Yeah, I can see that 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 this is another space that you're going to just dominate with. Uh, we've got about a minute left in in the segment. Is there is there? Uh, tell me this. Let me slow down and, and ask you. How can our audience uh, reach out to you and, and carry on the conversation we've had at least in this first segment to uh, at a greater greater depth without the time constraints that we face here? I think they can reach out right right to our, our website. Uh, we have live chat. We also have uh, the ability to do research. That's www.amstock.com, amstock.com. And I think that would be a great way for them to find out more about us and also uh, get more information on some of the things we just discussed. Great, Mark. All right, well, let's talk about some more parts of your company on the other side of the break. We'll be right back in just a minute, all right? Thanks, Mike. All right, you're welcome. And special thanks to Monk Media and 1-800-PublicRelations.com 
for all their PR and media support. We'll be right back with more from Mark Healy, CEO, American Stock Transfer and Trust Company. Welcome back to the Traders Network. I'm Michael Yorba, your host. Thanks for joining us. Broadcasting to you live from the Dallas KFXR 1190 AM Clear Channel Studios. You can get us on the iHeart app if you want to use your phone to listen to the show as well as streaming on yorbamedia.com. I'm joined by Mark Healy, CEO of American Stock Transfer and Trust Company. Mark, welcome back to the show. Thanks, Mike. All right, my pleasure. All right, you've had a really exciting past year, and AST uh, launched AST1, which we talked about on the last segment. But uh, if I can circle back just a little bit, you are saying that you have have got the edge in your industry sector by allowing the board to communicate better with the shareholder and track that. Can you open up a little, without giving the secret sauce out, but open up a little of the mechanics of how you've beat the competition in delivering this kind of top-level service? Sure. You know, we're, we're so integrated into, into an issue where right from the start, you know, when that company goes public, we're already there working with that issuer through their private life and as they're coming on to, you know, whatever exchange they're coming into. And you kind of don't know what you don't know when you're, when you're kind of coming about into public life. And it's just really great to have somebody there with you that's been through it so many times. And so that, that's a great advantage we bring right away. But, you know, as a company goes through a growth cycle and they mature, you know, they're going to be pressed with a number of, of things that they'll need to deal with as a maturing company and certainly some of those revolve around the annual meeting and, and proxy proposals and behaviors are are kind of similar uh, when you look at history so we have a lot of history on on, on uh, thousands of, of various activist campaigns and proposals that have been out there so we bring that to the table to help a company plan but you kind of never know uh, kind of what can occur when you're tracking the ownership of a company and because of the kind of somewhat subtlety here in the US markets where we have kind of an objecting ownership structure, uh, folks can somewhat hide their positions, uh, arbiters and the like. So we're able to go out with our expertise and our teams and kind of from a triangulation point, go to three independent sources, really track who's moving into that, in and out of that position and work directly with, uh, with the company to really help them identify what's going on and be proactive uh, in that sense to prepare for uh, you know, a, a, a more positive result for their, uh, for their meeting, but also uh, to have information that's not readily available to them. So, again, one of the better practices and intelligence points we can bring uh, with our ownership intelligence product, because we're sitting in the middle of, as you mentioned, one of our, out of every four public companies, we just get to see all, all that information. Right. I, I, I applaud you for the transparency you're being you're, you're providing the greater the greater level of transparency that you're providing, because I know that every investor definitely needs all the information they can get. And and uh, please, I encourage you to continue with the breakthrough uh, the breakthroughs on on your products, your services that you're doing. Let me move forward, if I if I may. Now, 2014 just got started, and uh, I wanted you to bring out the big plans that you have for your organization as we go through the next year. Sure. Certainly, we think we can be very impactful for investors. Uh, as I mentioned, you know, we have 7 million of them already. Uh, there's, there's a number of them. Once you get on the platform, you kind of get a veil to what's, a, what's there for you. And we think folks can really take control of their investing and, and their access to information through American Stock Transfer. And certainly 2014, we've seen kind of a recurrence to some of the IPO markets we haven't seen in, in a number of years. And certainly the access points to uh, not only those IPOs, but really investing directly with the company, uh, taking advantage of, of things like, uh, you know, free cost spaces, dividend reinvestments, and being able to come through to our, our wealth center, our AST personal wealth center, really give you the opportunity to take control of that experience. So whether it's transparency or information or just ease of use, we're going to continue to make efforts and, and push out there to really make the retail public uh, understand that it's not only just employees of these uh, publicly traded companies or the uh, direct investors, but really everyone who can take advantage of personal wealth solutions. So that's 
that's one big thing we're pushing on. Certainly, as we mentioned before, AST1 is becoming even more important, and certainly we even spend a lot of time on the mutual fund front. If you look at all the filings that are out there, you know, we, we've already brought uh, by a measure of tenfold success to mutual fund companies well beyond any other uh, firm out there. So kind of covering the board, but really it, to sum it up are two things that would be for the balance of 14 is really giving retail public investors access through AST Personal Wealth, all the things they need for making their lives simple and getting more information they should be made available to them for free. And then secondly, really working with issuers to help them and all the needs they have through AST1 and continuing to add services there, whether it's ownership intelligence or even working with them on their corporate governance issues for the board. So I think we certainly want to continue that. And we have a saying here at AST, it's, it's all about people and technology. Our people continue to invest in the, the right people here to, to serve you and, and, and make that continued investment in technology to make it easy for you to access us. Well, you're doing a great job. All right, where can our audience go to find more information about your wealth center? Because that's that's a new new thing that you're you're really bringing out to the world. Yeah, the, you're, you're going to continue to see big improvements on on that that site. Uh, you can reach that at, at AST Personal Wealth. Keep it real simple, right? AST Personal Wealth dot com. Uh, just go there, and and you can start to see all the things you have the access to and. And uh, if you're interested in mutual funds, uh, CEF Insight, CEFinsight.com can give you all the insight information and tracking on closed end funds. So right there, two, two big sites you can go for some really good information. Okay. Are these in-house people or are you bringing talent in from outside resources and then uh, managing that? Well, we, we've really grown as a firm. We're, we're, we're doing both. Uh, we have mm -hmm. some really great people here with tons of experience. Um, I myself, you know, I've joined the firm in, in the last five years, but um, we have grown from 325 people here to, to 900 people uh, in over five years. It's been a great growth story, and we, we, we've recruited the, the top folks in, in every facet uh, of financial services that we provide on for, for, our, for our company and our shareholders. So, we're going to continue to do that, and, and we see a lot of folks that are continuing to be interested in joining us. And, and lastly, you know, what I would add to that is, you know, as a private company ourselves, uh, we also uh, will become a public company in the near future. So, you know, going public and, and having those opportunities to continue to grow in public markets, um, hopefully we can help ourselves do that with all the services we offer. But, you know, look forward for us coming out uh, additionally ourselves and seeing us as a publicly traded company, you know, in the next year or two. That's definitely a must own for everybody's portfolio. Now, let, let me change gears a little bit and lean into your your, your expertise, your, your inside, under the cover knowledge of your industry sector. There's going to be changes as we go forward in 2014 in, in your industry sector, and 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 you also have the, your your finger on the pulse of the the amount of IPOs, the actual money flow that's coming into capital formation, job creation, things of that nature. Tell me where how you see 2014 evolving when it comes to capital formation or job creation and the kinds of, of in industries that you see are popping up on on your radar more often now than they have say in the past year or so. Sure, you, you know we we've seen as as most of your audience probably knows you know quite quite a softness for a bit in IPOs end of last year beginning of this year you know we get a veil to almost all of them. Uh, we, we service, uh, you know, one of every four publicly traded companies, but in the last five years, we, we've been winning uh, over 50% of all the IPOs that come out, uh, and they come on to our platform. And, and mostly we've seen a, a real big mix between, you know, retail firms, uh, retail-based uh, organizations, and technology organizations. There's been a significant buildup uh, of private companies, and again, we see that because we service these private companies in our employee stock plan group, and then ultimately they roll out into the public. So we're seeing a, a very nice, good volume, a good, a good VIX of that coming back out into the market. And secondly, what that also creates is corporate action, so a number of mergers and acquisitions. I think you'll see a lot of that uh, coming out over the balance of 14, where you know companies will follow through and start to acquire uh, other firms, 
We've seen it primarily in the technology sector and the retail sector, as I mentioned, but I'm sure that will spread uh, to some other areas as we go out over the course of the next, you know, six to nine to 12 months. But we, we, we really anticipate a lot of that volume uh, finally coming to fruition that's kind of backed up over, I think, the last 24 to 30 months. So, you know, more information we have, we certainly would like to share that with you. But that, that's kind of what we see right now and what we think will happen over the balance of, of the calendar year. You know, the the way you bring that out, it gives me a good feeling that any pullback that happens in the market would be considered as a buying dip with this underlying strength coming through. And you're at ground zero to see it happening. Is that the is, is that the feeling that you're getting? That, that Michael, I would say for five years that, that you know, we're, that's exactly where we, we feel we are right now. And, and, and really, that's why we we feel as a company we've made all these other kind of services and kind of uh, transparency windows available to companies and shareholders so they can get that same access. Perfect. All right, uh, Mark, we've got, we've got to close it for now, but please, before you go, one more time, inf- contact information for our audience to reach out to you. Sure. Uh, directly to, to us at, at AST would be amstock.com, amstock.com. And, Michael, thank you again for the time this afternoon. Uh, to- my pleasure. And I'm going to say, extend an invitation right now. I want you to come back on the show and keep us up to speed of what's going on with you. Be my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Mark Healy, CEO, American Stock Transfer and Trust Company, and a special thanks to Monk Media and 1-800-PublicRelations.com for all their PR and media support. We'll be right back on the other side of this break with Robin Smith, Chairman, CEO, Neo Stem, an embargo interview, ladies and gentlemen. Something real special around the corner. We'll be right back. 